Okay, mighty companions, let's get started. Let's get started. Let's get started. Let's go into the Course in Miracles. So I'd like to ask you to take a deep breath right now. And let yourself just relax and get centered. Fight that impulse to just not let yourself tune in. One of the first things you want to do is you want to ask yourself, why, why are you here? Why are you here? I want to welcome you to A Course in Miracles. This is Earl Purdy here on Facebook Live. That ain't no jive. And uh, I'm getting a chance to do the thing that I love to do the most. And that's share some thoughts of love, some thoughts of consciousness, some thoughts that have to do with, with the truth. And remember that the only rules to A Course in Miracles is that you don't have to believe anything that I'm telling you to say. I'm not trying to convert anybody in any kind of way. So you don't have to believe the ideas. You don't have to accept the ideas. You don't have to welcome the ideas. Some of the ideas you may actively resist. Some of the ideas you may actively resist. Some of the ideas you may actively resist, which means you may not agree with some of the things that I say. You may not agree with some of the things that the Course in Miracles says, but that doesn't mean it's not true. You may not agree with some of the things the Course in Miracles says. You may not believe in some of the things that I say, but it doesn't mean it's not true. You may not believe some of the things the Course in Miracles says, and you may not believe some of the things I say, but it doesn't mean it's not true, but also doesn't mean your point of view isn't true also. Okay, so just remember, I'm just giving you another way of looking at things. I'm, that's it. And so what I try to tell people is accept what you can accept and what works for you, what clicks for you. And then what doesn't, just forget it. Just drop it. Okay? All right. Yeah, it's going to be good. Can you, can you kind of like sit them down? Hey, it's going to get everybody's attention constantly. I know that. One thing they always said, never perform with children and dogs and animals. You know, you just, it's, a, it's a losing battle It's a me immediately because they're going to draw everybody's attention. But I'm glad you're here. I have a... I'm glad you're here. You know. had a comment? Well, I'm about to, I'm about to start my class. Please, go ahead. Okay. All right. Um, I will give you an opportunity after the class to ask any questions, make any comments, to get any kind of clarification. So you will get an opportunity to do that. But during the class, what I want to do is focus on what the Course is saying and help everybody hear what the Course in Miracles is saying. We're going to be, uh, also the Course in Miracles says some of the ideas uh, you may actively resist some of the ideas you may actively resist and some of the ideas you may find hard to believe. I don't know why it's making all that noise today. So just stare at each other and tell each other how cute you are. Okay, all right. Let's see if we can get if we can get uh, centered. This must going to be this must going to be exceptionally good today. Every distraction possible is happening. So so that means that so that means it's going to be good. I mean, I, it's like, it's, 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 yeah. Those of you online, know you like you might be saying, "What the hell is going on?" Okay. Hey, we're not panicking. That's the same question I'm asking myself. 
<laughs> so we both doing it. What's not going on? Yeah, what's like what's not going on right now in this, in this moment? It's right. Okay, and so the Course says, some of the ideas you may actively resist, some of the ideas you will find hard to believe, some of the ideas might startle you. This is straight from the Course in Miracles. This is straight from the Course in Miracles. You're not asked to judge the ideas at all. You're not asked to judge the ideas at all. You're not being asked to analyze the ideas at all. The, the Course says that the easiest way to know what the Course is saying is true is to try it and to use it. That's the easiest way. Try it and use it. Because the Course in Miracles is not, what's cool about the Course in Miracles is that it's not at all concerned with the outer. It's only concerned with the way that you are perceiving things. Because it teaches that the way that you are perceiving things determines the way you feel. So the way that you're feeling right now is coming from the way that you're interpreting things right now. The way that I'm feeling right now is coming from the way I'm judging right now, interpreting right now judging what's going on and what's happening right now. So all of your feelings are doing the same thing. So what the Course is saying to us is that if you can change your interpretation, if you can change your feelings, if you can change your interpretation and you can change your feelings about everything that's going on, then you will do that through changing the way that you're looking at it. And the Course is also teaching us that the wrong way to do it is to tell yourself if everybody else around you were different in some way, you'd be happy. If you could change everybody and everything around you to act according to the script that you have for them, that then you'll be happy. The Course says that's the way that's going to always end in misery and in failure as far as your happiness is concerned. Now, have you ever used the second one? The one where if you were different, I'd be happy? Yes. Yeah. If you spoke different, I'd be happy. If you dressed different, I'd be happy. You know, if you talk different, I'd be happy. If you made love differently, I'd be happy. If you took me out somewhere beside Burger King, I'd be happy. Yeah. Right? We yeah. come up with one thing. The Course says one of the main ways that we use our mind is to come up with ways that other people should change. Mm -hmm. Right? So I'm using my mind to come up with how you need to be different in order for me to be happy. How I need to teach different for you to be happy. Or how I need to be saying something from the Course different for, from you, for you to be happy. So the Course of Miracles calls that the ego plan. And it defines the ego plan as the plan that's coming from your wrong mind. It's coming from the part of your mind that will not uh, give you the peace and the harmony that you want right now. I've never taught a class in 40 years that people overall didn't agree with what I just said. And then turn right around, five minutes after class is over with, and then get upset again because the weather needs to be different and I'd be happy. <laughs> right? Yeah. So. So it's real easy from uh, an intellectual perspective to sometimes agree with what the truth says. It's a totally different experience for you to actually be able to practice it in your day-to-day -day experience. That's when you realize how much of your conditioning and your patterns play in your life. And so the Course is also saying to us that we get to the point that we believe we are our patterns, that they actually become who we think we are, and that's what our identity is. It's, a, um, it's, it's, it's based on all the things that you've learned and experienced in your life up to this point. And then when somebody asks you who you are, you really just tell them what you've learned you are, and not really what you are. It's what I think I am based on everything that's ever happened to me and everything I've ever learned. So that's why the Course says your personality self, your ego, is an illusion because it's just something we're making up, a self-concept we're making up as we go along based on our learning and our experience. Everybody with me on that? Yeah. 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 That's why you said that you of 10 years ago is totally different from the you of the day, today. Well, the concept you may have had of yourself 10 years ago based on what you thought you knew 10 years ago was who you thought you were 10 years ago. And guess what? It's a good possibility that 10 years from now, well, I don't even know if I'll be here, but 10 years from now, <laughs> Uh, but the case I am, because you know, I, I maybe haven't got rid of all my guilt yet. Uh, <laughs> a lot of times, my ego said to me, "Oh, you too guilty to die. You're not getting, you're not getting, you're not getting out here that easy." You know, so, so because it says that you know, you may we we think that this is this is love and we think this is reality, but it's not really reality. That it, the course teaches us the difference between what it calls reality and what it calls unreality, the illusion. 
And the easiest definition that it gives is anything that's real is permanent and anything that's not real is temporary. So reality is something you can always depend on that's going to always be there. It's a love that you can always count on. It's the universal laws that work regardless of race, creed, color, social, economic. It's what we can always count on no matter what. The court says that's what reality is, and love is the only reality. But if you choose not to tune into love, then it says what happens at that point is you have to see and experience the opposite of love which is fear, anger, guilt, grievance, and separation, pretty much the six o'clock news, <laughs> right? So look at each other one more time and tell you how cute, kids are, how cute they are. So, sometimes when I cover this, I, I feel like I'm like, like, a, like a flight attendant on an airplane because people have heard it so many times that they don't, it's hard to tune in after a certain point, but it makes all the difference as far as really being able to appreciate what the Course in Miracles is saying. And it says, bottom line is, if I want to see that it's true, then I need to use it. Okay, so the section we're going to cover and we're going to take off from where we left off last week. It's called the little, the little willingness. It's uh, on chapter eighteen, on page three eighty. Page three eighty in the blue book, the Bishop of Inner Peace book. The little willingness, uh, section four, chapter eighteen, page three, page three eighty, page three eighty. Okay. The Course in Miracles is only talking about love or fear, no matter what terminology is used, and it's just talking about love or fear. So we left off, uh, view is, if you're going to be happy, the Course is saying basically that holy instant, if you want to be happy, it's the result of your determination to be happy. So my being happy is more coming from my, de my determination to be happy than to get you to change in order for me to be happy. My happiness is going to come from my determination to be happy more so than it's going to come from my deciding what my happiness is going to be and then assigning roles to everybody I know. My happiness is going to come from a decision. It's not going to come from controlling people. <clears throat> so do you know that your happiness is, I'm going, I, I love to repeat, I call myself the divine repetition teacher because the Course says it's the repeating of the truth and hearing the truth over and over again that brings a person to the point that they accept it. It's not analyzing it and thinking that your understanding is what makes something true. So if you want to save time, because, because the way that a person already thinks is based on what they've been repeating to themselves. You got that? You call, you, whatever you're telling yourself over and over and over again, that's what you're going to believe. Whatever you're being told and you accept is true over and over again that you hear. He says that's what you're going to believe is true. So actually, if it was something you wanted to believe and some new truth you wanted to accept, it would be better that you heard it over and over again and said it to yourself over and over again. And, was, and if you were around other people saying it to you over and over again, you're loving, you're lovable, you're loved, you're loved, you're lovable, you're loved, you're lovable, you're valuable, you're important, you count, you're a treasure, you're priceless. Well, if you kept hearing that over and over again, what would happen? You decide to believe it, right? So what do people do? A lot of people form special relationships with people who never tell them anything good about themselves, who don't tell them, I love you, you're valuable, I appreciate you. They, they get with people who never say it to them or judge them or criticize them or tell them how they need to change in order to make the other person happy. So the person you spend the most time with is the person that's most helping the programming that you're giving yourself. Think about that the next time you give somebody your phone number. Mm -hmm. Can you repeat that? Yeah. <laughs> that's what I said. I told, I told, that's what I'm here to do. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You want to be around someone who's sharing with you and seeing you and calling you and telling you you are the thing that you want to be. 
Because the thing, the Course in Miracles says, the thing that you want to be is what you already think you are, or you wouldn't want to be it because you wouldn't believe the potential was there to be it. So if I say I want to be a more loving person, I have to already believe that being a loving person was possible and in me. So I can tell what a person thinks about themselves by what they tell me their aspirations are. You tell me what you want to be. You tell me what you want to have. You tell me what you value. You just told me everything about you I need to know. I don't have to know the details of it. I just need to know what your purpose is and what our purpose is and why are we in this friendship? Why are we in this relationship? Why did you come to the class? Because he says the goal determines the outcome. So if I want to know how something is going to turn out, it's going to turn out according to my goal, provided, next line, you want it above all else. Like he says here, the, the holy instant, which is the happy loving instant, is the result of your determination to be holy, which he calls happy loving. Uh, it's the answer. So the desire and the willingness to let it come precede its coming. So before you come, you have to desire and have a willingness for it. Before whatever comes, you have to have the desire. So if I want to be happy, I have to be determined to be happy. Then I have to have the desire to be happy. Then I have to have the willingness to be happy. And then, that, then it'll come. So what it takes is determination, desire, and willingness. Those are the three things. I have to be determined. I have to desire it. And I have to have willingness. And I would challenge you to question anything that you say you desire that you have no enthusiasm about. Don't you think that if it was really something you really wanted, you'd have some juice about it? You'd have some kind of enthusiasm about it? So next time you can't, you're trying to come up with what you want, how in, ask yourself, how inspired do I feel? How, how much does the idea of doing this really turn me on? Or am I doing it because I think I oughta, gotta, shoulda? Mm -hmm. So you got to let go of the oughta, the gathers, and the shoulds. I should be doing it, I ought to do it, I got to do it. It's not an inspired reason to do something, but it's the reason why most people do. They go to work tomorrow because they should go to work tomorrow. And the Course in Miracles taught us a few weeks ago that every time you do something that you don't really want to do, you're actually increasing your fear and your conflict. So you want to cut down on the things that you do in your <coughs> life that, uh, that you feel like you got to do it, ought to do it, and should do it, and how soon can you make it I want to do it. I desire to do it, I'm determined to do it, and I'm willing to do it. Mm. Mm. Let's say that. Mm. Okay. All right. Then he goes, well, how do you prepare your mind? Well, the Course says, well, you prepare your mind for it only to the extent of recognizing you want it above all else. So the next stage has got to be, I got to want this above all else. So if I don't want it above all else, then I'm not preparing my mind to have it. So you had to want to come over here above all else to be sitting in those chairs. In other alternatives that you could have done, you chose this over that. I know you may wonder why by the time they had the class of going, but that's a whole nother story. Then you might be above all else. I want to get the hell out of here. But that's okay, too. <laughs> or you go above all else. My goodness, I'll be back next week if in, if in any way possible. And my job is to deliver the message without being concerned about how you react to the message, because if I give you something and then I have a condition for how you should receive it, the Course says this is no longer a gift, it's an imprisonment. Mm -hmm. So every time you give something, you don't invite somebody over for dinner, and then the next minute you're going, well, I'm not going to invite them anymore because they never invite me over. But then that wasn't a real gift mm -hmm. when, you, when you invited them to come over. It was an imprisonment. Because now you're saying, I've had you over three times, you never asked me out to dinner. But the nature of a gift is that you just give it without any strings attached. Mm -hmm. So I have to remember to share what the Course is saying with you without any strings attached. Sometimes I, I'm good at it, sometimes I'm not. Which is what I think happens with all of us about anything. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you pull it off, sometimes you don't. Right? Then it says, uh, it's, it's, I love this line, it's not necessary that you do more. More than what? Wanted above all else. But it's necessary that you realize the most important thing to realize, he says, is that you can't do more than wanted above all else. But your, your role is to want it above all else. That's your goal. Your, your role is to be determined to have it, have the desire to have it, be willing to have it, and you prepare your mind by recognizing you want it above all else, and it's to know it's not necessary that you do more. It's necessary that you know you can't do more than want it above all else. Now, the Course in Miracles is talking about total fulfillment, peace, love, joy. 
but these rules apply to anything. The Course in Miracles says that one of the main things for us to remember is that any true law applies to anything. And that's really important to keep in mind. You could take any one of the attitudes that I'm saying and you could apply it to anything from dinner to your career. If I'm hungry, I have to want to eat before, <laughs> above all else. I have to be determined, I have to be willing, I have to prepare, prepare my mind but want that pork chop or, or that uh, tofu <laughs> above <laughs> all else. <laughs> <laughs> I got to cover the spectrum nowadays, you know, you can't leave nothing out, right? And so the Course says, the, I love it, it says, if you want to have the strength to do something, all you have to do is make the undivided decision to have it. That when a person says they want to do something but they procrastinate, they actually haven't made an undivided decision to have it. Because the, once you really desire it, he says the strength to do it comes with it. Right? So if I really had a desire to have a relationship, then I would have the strength and the attitude to do whatever was necessary to have the kind of relationship I wanted. If I wanted more of an awareness of God, I'd be doing everything possible to <coughs> increase that awareness. If I want more, whatever it is, the Course of Miracles is saying that if you want to have the strength to do it, it has to be something you've made an undivided decision to do. So I like to reverse it and to get myself aware by going, okay, what is it that I seem to procrastinate about? What is it that I don't seem like I have the aggression and the strength to do? Well, the court, and then I can tell myself, this is something I haven't decided to do yet. Even though I'm telling myself I've made the decision to do it, if I don't have the strength to do it, I haven't made the decision to do it or see it that way. Interesting. That some of you, did that make you clear about a few things in your life real quick? Okay, how many things in your life are you feeling inspired to do or you are doing it because you should, God, or order. That's another way to get in touch with whether or not you're following your spiritual or your inner voice or your inner guide. One of the things that can be challenging, and, and I've noticed in working with and teaching the Course for four decades, is that people can get depressed when they first study the Course or they'll watch it because they'll see how much they're not doing. Right, they'll see, oh, that's right, I really am procrastinating. Oh, I really am, I don't have determination. Oh, I really am doing this without, from a standpoint of should or gotta, or uh, I don't want this above all else. You know, then all of a sudden the mind can be tempted to feel depressed by how much it's not doing, but what it's really doing is giving you a, a wonderful gift because you know that not having what you think you want in order to be happy is not somebody uh, depriving you of it, it's just the result of the way you're looking at it and the decisions you've been making. So now you can get out of the situation and now you can change the situation. But if your happiness depended on me having to be a certain way, then you're taking your happiness out of to, totally from your control. And if the Course is saying that if you really want to be happy, know that all you can do is want what you want above all else. That that's what people don't, people focus more attention on how to get a goal than they do on focusing on the desire to have the goal happen. Because they think they've already said that. I want to be a doctor, so I don't have to say that every day. But what I'm going to do is try to figure out how to do it. And the Course is saying, no, when it comes to peace and love and joy, you have to want it, you have to be determined to have it, and you have to want it above all else. And then it says, uh, don't attempt to give, the, I love this, don't attempt to give the higher power more than the higher power asks or God asks. Or you add the ego, which is your beliefs, to it. And then he says, then when you do that, then, then it, uh, it says, do not attempt to give the Holy Spirit what the Holy Spirit doesn't ask, or you will add the ego to the Holy Spirit, and guess what? You'll confuse the two. So what does that mean? When I try to take over, when I try to handle it, when I try to give the Holy Spirit or God or the higher power or the universe, whatever you want to call it, anything other than me being determined and willing and wanted above all else, then I'm giving what I'm not being asked for. Not only that, you need to recognize that when you're listening to the voice of your higher self, that your higher self in love asks but little. So I'm giving you substitute definitions. So let's make it practical. Uh, <clears throat> loving, really loving someone is, doesn't ask for, it, it, it asks for very little. Somebody that's actually loving you is not someone who's de making demands and putting scripts on you. That would be somebody who was asking very little of you because they weren't really asking you to change anything about yourself. Because they, in love, they love you because of the way you are. And if I love you because of the way you are, what am I always trying to get you to do something that will be something different? 
So being with somebody that's constantly giving you conditions of how you have to be for them to be happy will obviously be someone that's not expressing real love for you. And now you know why you're having all those problems. Y'all don't love each other. You're not letting the love come through. Mm. Mm. Okay, you got it? Okay. Doesn't mean you're bad. Doesn't mean they're bad. It just means you're making a mistake. Uh, do you know the Course says that we, um, we, don't, we don't like to make mistakes? That we've been programmed to believe that we don't like to make mistakes. So love asks but little. It's love, which is the creator, who asks the greatness and the might. So I'm being asked for very little, but the greatness and the might is going to come from that which created me. It's going to come from God, high power. So let me get this straight. Uh, love is going to ask little because it's going to do the rest. I'm asking little because I'm going to do the rest. I'm asking for little because I'm going to do the rest. Let's, make it, let's, let's use some analogies. I come into the house. You invite me over. You want to make dinner for me or whatever you want to do, and you say, just sit down and relax. I'm almost finished here in the kitchen, and I'll bring the food out. You see what I'm saying? That I'm not being asked to do a lot. I'm being asked to do a little because the person wants to give, right? So they, so they want to give, then they're going to ask little. A get person has all kinds of conditions for what you have to do in order for them to give you their dysfunctional love. We, we make people work too hard for dysfunctional love. Think about that for a minute. I'm making you work so hard for my love, but really I have not gotten rid of the blocks and the healings that I need to go through to love myself enough yet to really love you. So really I, I'm trying to make you the next person I give my fear to, but I'm going to call it love. How you, how you know it's fear? You're jealous. How you know it's fear? You're jealous. How you know it's fear? You're jealous. How do you know it's fear? You're jealous. How do you know it's fear? You're jealous. You're insecure. You're insecure. You're insecure. You're behind the bush when they come home. <laughs> <laughs> you got one of those trackers in the underwear. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's not a symbol of I really love you and I really trust this love that we have. If I trust you, then I'm not afraid. If I don't trust you, I'm afraid. And that's what I think is a challenge about the Course in Miracles. It won't let you get away with stuff that normally you will get away with because it's too easy to tell where you're coming from. But that's the good news because, again, if I'm doing it incorrectly, then that means that I could really have what I wanted if I just do it another way. But if you think you're doing it right and you're not getting what you want, the Course in Miracles says, well, where do you go? What's righter than doing what's right? So if you're doing it the right way and it's not working, you're stuck. Would you going to try to do it the wrong way and then it'll start working? So, so the Course is saying whenever you're in a situation or a circumstance where you feel unhappy or you have conflict or you have upset, it says the first thing that you should do is just admit to yourself that you don't like the way you feel. Don't try to do the false positive stuff. Mm -hmm. Tell the truth about how you feel. Right now I feel very jealous and I feel very upset. Uh, about what I think about what you're doing, but what I think you're doing. He says, so the first thing you do is you tell yourself the truth about what you're upset about. Then the Course says the next thing you do is say, I'm, so I hope I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. See, I, I think you're going to do something to hurt me. I don't want to be right about that, but I'm going to be honest with myself that I don't trust you, but I, I hope I'm wrong about not trusting you. He said, that, that's the step. And then so the, so the once you hope you're wrong, then that opens you up to receive guidance from your higher power because now you're not stuck on your position of being right to the point you can't hear another way to look at it. And so that opens you up to get the answer. But first you have to want the answer above all else. And then recognize that the fact that you're still dealing with the same issue over and over again means you don't know how to handle it. And it also says when, when spirit gives us the truth, the temptation would be to go unconscious and to go to sleep. That's why I don't take it personal. Because I've, told, I've already been told, the Course in Miracles tells you what everybody's going to do. It tells you exactly what a person's going to do that thinks they're separate from you. And it tells you exactly what a person is going to do who think they're connected and joined with you. It tells you exactly what a person is going to do who doesn't know what love is. 
and exactly what the person would do that knows what to why. So that I don't know the difference when someone is talking to me and sharing with me and telling me who they are. If I know the difference between love and fear and what's real and not real, then I can make a, a, a really great choice about what to do with them, or how deep they get to know them, or what I could expect to happen between us. See, if I know that everybody in the room, we all think we're separate from each other and we think we're bodies that are separate from each other, the Course in Miracles tells you exactly what that's going to happen with people who believe they're separate from you. And most especially people who believe they're guilty or bad or sinful. It, it tells you so that you will already know beforehand what's going to happen in the, in the Course in Miracles calls that vision. Since vision is knowing how something's going to turn out before you do it. Right? You, had to, you had the vision you were coming to the class, right? So you saw that before you even got in the car. You would never have gotten in the car. So vision is telling you what's going to happen, what's going to be the end result. That's what a goal is. It's using vision, okay? Um, and the Course in Miracles uh, also says take it slow, take it slow. That's why I'm not rushing through this because we all know how to read. So it's not a matter of, of how fast, how much we can read, but if we walk out of here saying, okay, I'm really determined to have love in my life right now. I, I desire it, I'm willing to do it, and I can prepare my mind by recognizing I want some peace in my life above all else. I want some joy in my life above all else. Then I need to remember I can't do more than that. That that's, that's the main thing that I need to do because the once I make that decision, the universe is gonna add all the mightiness and the greatness and the health and the support I need to make that happen. I say it again, the universe, spirit, God, is going to give you all the help that you need to make that happen, which presents an issue to a person who has no desire or thought that there is a higher power other than their own ego. But that's, but, you know, but that's not who I'm talking to right now. I'm talking to you, and so we're trying to remember together. So then the Course, in, the course says that love asks but little. Love asks the greatness and the might, Love joins with you to make a happy or a holy instant far greater than you can understand. So you are already, imagine being in a relationship and you already want to have joy and happiness. And, the per, and, that's, and that could be a friendship. I'm not just talking about romantic relationships. And I have to have a person join you to make your happiness and to have, help make your happiness greater than you can understand. What would it be like to be with someone that you would experience in such happiness that you couldn't even understand? That it was beyond your comprehension. Well, that's what's going to happen when you do what you're told. That's what's going to happen when you want to be happy above all else and be loved above all else. That's what's going to happen when you realize you can't do it all, that you just have to recognize you can't do it all, and then trust that if you do what you're told, then you'll get the might and you'll get the support and you'll get the help. And also, you won't, do it, you won't be doing more, you'll be doing little. It, sometimes it's funny how people will say they want to support you. Like they'll say, like over the years from time to time, I've had someone say, I really want to help your ministry out, your teaching ministry. I really want to help you. Right? And do you know what the average person's idea of help is, or either what I've created? Uh, is they think it's telling you more things you need to do. <laughs> they say, well, you need to be on social media, and you need to get more, they just started telling me a list. Of, Wait a minute now. If you're helping me, you say, I'm going to handle the contact list. I'll put you on social. You'll be, you, you, you'll be helping me do less. <laughs> you won't be coming up with more for me to do. You know what I'm saying? You're going to help me move the sofa. You're not going to sit on it. <laughs> <laughs> right? And, Nicole, and, and that's what, that's what uh, many relationships are for people who don't know what love is. They're doing pretty good, actually, by themselves. And it's almost as if they choose to have a relationship because they're, not, they're, they're tired of being peaceful. <laughs> 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 they had as much peace as they can stand, you know. And then somebody that's conscious would, would have been working on themselves and go, "Okay, I want to be in a relationship in order to make happy, to be a means for happiness and joy." And then, and, they, and that's the only reason why I want to be in it. That's what the core says. That if you really are in a relationship of any type for the real reason you should be in it, it should be for you all to be giving and receiving happiness and love and joy. And anything else you come up with is coming from your fear, your lack and you believe in that you don't have something that you need, that they, you need to get from them. Mm. 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 Pretty much told me about all my relationships, right? 
But you don't find out how you don't find out how crazy you are until you develop the sanity to handle it. Right? It's like right now I'm looking at the deepest, darkest aspects of my own ego, my own fears, my own guilt, my own insecurities. I've worked on the core so long that it can reveal more and more that I need to love and release, but I also have grown to the point that I can I love myself enough to not attack myself when I see how unselfish, how selfish I've been or how angry I've been, or how much I attacked, or how much I was trying to manipulate when I thought I wasn't, right? So I have to be uh, aware enough in my spiritual development that I can see my darkness and not condemn myself for it. So that's why you, just, you don't see all your stuff at first, because you have not, a person has not developed the ability to love themselves unconditionally yet. Does, does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. So, so I've been in this so long that now I'm, dealing, I'm looking at my deepest, darkest core uh, misperceptions, fears, and beliefs. But I also have 40 years of the Course in Miracles that also helps me look at it in a way that I can dissipate it by not condemning myself about it and wanting to do it differently now. Does it make okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to keep checking in because what, what I'm saying is so simple, it can be, uh, it can be elusive to us. Mm -hmm. the, the Course in Miracles actually says that, that, that there's nothing harder for us to see than something simple. <laughs> because we are, we are, it says, it says we're basically programmed to believe complexity. Things need to be very complex. I'm a very complex person. No, I'm either choosing for, choosing for love or I'm choosing for fear. I'm either choosing for conflict or I'm choosing. No, I'm not, I'm not a complex person at all. What I'm complex in is all the different ways I've come up with to have the simplicity. Now, that's where I'm complicated. Because I'm going to tell you all about what happened with my daddy, what happened with my mama, and then how I was born up in my, in my race. And I'm going to give you all these reasons why I'm not choosing for peace right now. That's the complexity. Why? Because I'm going to go above all else. I'm not determined to have it. I'm not willing to have it. Uh, um, I'm still trying to do too much. I'm still trying to come up with my own little plans about how to do it. And I'm not letting the universe support me and give me the support and the might. And also, I need to be ready to have a love that I can't even comprehend is so good. That this is so good, I just make me cry. I had, I had a piece of cheesecake like that last night. It was so good, I just couldn't comprehend. It was like, why well, my God? <laughs> and right? And it was something that tastes good, something that I was giving myself joy with, and I had not the slightest idea how it was created or made. If you told me, Earl, bake a cheesecake or die, I said, okay, just go ahead and shoot. <laughs> okay? Because... I enjoy, so many, I enjoy so many things in my life that I don't know why it exists or how it exists. That includes you. That's right. That's right. You won't see me barreling down on you in the car when you're trying to cross the street. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's not going to happen. So how do you, then of course goes, well, how do you allow the creator to give you a lot? How do you allow the universe to give you a lot? Isn't that a great question? Well, how do you allow, then it says, well, I'm going to tell you. The way you allow the universe to give you a lot is for you to realize you need do so little. Mm -hmm. So the more you realize you need not do as much as you are trying to do, the more the universe spirit can do for you. That's the opposite to where I've been programmed. Mm -hmm. You mean to tell me I'm doing too much? Yeah, not only are you doing too much, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Right? How do you know you're doing it wrong? Well, because I don't want it above all else. I don't have the determination and the willingness. I'm not doing a little so spirit can do a lot. I'm thinking that everybody needs to change around me. Then I'd be happy. Yeah, I'm not doing it right. That's why I'm not really happy. So, um, so then it goes, now, what is the first thing you, you, you must do? He says, well, the first thing you must do, if you want the spirit to do more for you, is realize you need to stop trusting your good intentions. At the first time I read that in this book, it tripped me out. It said, trust not your good intentions. Stop trusting your good intentions. I meant well. I told him that because I meant well. Well, he says, why? <laughs> if the course is so fractal. Why is it that I shouldn't trust my good intentions? He said, well, because they're not enough. Don't trust something that's not enough. Don't trust something that's not enough. Don't try, you not feel like you're receiving enough joy, enough happiness, enough peace, and you can't trust that. You can't trust anything that is not enough. It was so easy for me to be this wonderful gathering that I was at last night with lots of great food and lots of great people. Um, and because there was so much abundance, then 
I was satisfied. And once you're satisfied, then you are just extending, joining, connecting, loving, because there's nobody needs anything. So, so you all of a sudden you have control, more control over yourself, the choices that you make. And so you need to realize um, you're, if you're not going to trust your good intentions, what should you trust? If I'm not going to trust my good intentions, what, what should I trust? He says, trust your willingness. Mm. Now, remember, the thing you're most tempted to go unconscious on is the thing you need to hear the most. Mm -hmm. That's why you're going unconscious on it, because you've just, you've just been pegged about what you do to keep yourself in pain. And if a person wants to keep themselves in pain, they're not going to be successful because love will always heal us no matter what we think about ourselves. So it's, it's not a possibility that any of us are not going to end up in a space of total happiness and joy. So it doesn't really make any difference how you, what you do or what you don't do. You're still going to end up happy one day, and you're still going to end up in love one day, and you're still going to end up fulfilled because you are not as smart as that which created you, and that which created you loves you unconditionally no matter what you think about yourself so it's going to help you no matter what you do and no matter what you don't do if you really love me then you're going to love me regardless of what I do what, what, what if I'm being abused what if I'm being abused well if nobody that loves you is going to be abusing you so therefore you already dealing with somebody that don't know what love is mm -hmm. and you don't either or you would have never got in this situation in the first place mm -hmm. If you could have recognized how crazy they were, you never would have gave them your phone number. So you didn't, you didn't know. You were innocent. You were doing the best you could from where you were right then. So maybe it was something you wanted to get so bad you overlooked what you obviously knew. And that happens a lot. You know, I've had a, I've had a couple of butts do that to me. Okay, now. <laughs> so what do you trust? I know, I know. That's what I'm saying. My jokes are special, okay? Some, some, they're time release. Sometimes you don't, you don't get it to several hours later, and you be driving down the street, and you go, <laughs> you know, yeah, that's okay. That's all right. But in other words, what I was saying was, sometimes my desire to get the body superseded my common sense, and I got involved with people that I never should have just because of some bodily desire. Okay. Uh, have anybody in here ever done that? That's right. Don't y'all leave me hanging out to dry. Okay. That's, that's right. Thank you. I appreciate that. Really, because sometimes when you're talking to, when you're talking in situations like this, the temptation would be for your audience because they're trying to be spiritual, and I am too, to almost act like we can't relate to what the person is saying. Oh, you mean getting wanting to be with somebody because of how they looked or what they had or their body? You mean you've done that, Earl? Yeah. <laughs> Right, and, and, and I thought my happiness came from being as successful as. Oh. Yeah. All right. So, let's go a little bit further. Don't forget, that's why I do the 15-minute discussion question thing after the class, so that I can answer the questions and the things that come up. Other than that, they become distractions that get us sidetracked, and that's why I don't do it. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. Um, no. All right. Now, trust not your good intentions, your good trust not your good intentions, your good intentions. Trust not your good intentions. Your good intentions are not enough. So what should you trust? He says, you should trust your willingness, whatever else may enter. I'm gonna trust that I'm willing to have peace with you all. I'm gonna trust that um, that what we are doing in here is important enough that you came today and it means something to you. I gotta I gotta trust my willingness. I can't trust my good intentions, but I can definitely trust how willing I am to try to change and heal and love you more and be more conscious with you. So stop trying to trust your good intention spirit is telling us, I want, to, I want you all to trust your willingness, whatever else may enter, concentrate, quite concentrate only on how willing you are. Concentrate only on how willing you are to have whatever it is above all else. Concentrate on your willingness to have whatever it is above all else, stop trusting your good intentions. I had the good intention to do this. I had the good intention to do that. Don't trust your good intentions. Your good intentions are not enough. Your good intentions are not enough. Then it, said, it says, guess what? Don't even be disturbed that shadows surround it. What does that mean? 
don't be disturbed because you don't have complete willingness yet. Don't be disturbed because you feel like you can't pull this off yet because that's the shadows. So I know you're going to have some doubts if you can do this. I know you're going to have some doubts whether or not you can be totally willing all the time. And so the court says, well, if you have those, don't be disturbed. I love this. He says, don't be disturbed about the fact that you don't know how to do this and a part of you is not willing to do this. He says, that's why you came. If you already knew how to be unconditionally loving, you never would have come to the class in the first place. If you already knew how to forgive everybody around you, you never would be reading this. That's what he said. Don't be disturbed because you got the problem that you need to be solved. Don't be disturbed about that. Because if you didn't have that problem in your mind, you wouldn't be trying to get it solved. So don't get upset about, about having what you think of as problems. There's a line in the, uh, there's a part of the course that deals with prayer. And like everything else about the course, what it says is very different from what I was taught. It say, and it says it, what you should do with, a, with what you think of as a specific problem or what you think of as your problem, say give your problems over to the higher power, your greater self, God, as a gift. I'm like, what? Yeah, look at every problem you think you have that you're giving to the source. Look at it as that, start calling your problems gifts. Gifts to God. Gifts to the higher. He said, and, it's, and that, I went, well, why? He said, well, because... If you give all your problems to me, that shows me you're not putting anything before me. If you give all your problems to me, you let me know you're doing what I'm asking you to do. Because you say you want to follow me, but well, the way you follow me is to do what I say. That's what surrendering means. I'm doing what I'm told, and I just told you. Be determined, have willingness, have a desire. I told you that I want you to want it above all else. I also told you that I'm not going to ask you to do a whole lot in order for you to have a whole lot. I told you not to trust your good intentions. I told you to trust your willingness. See, see we, we ask for guidance, then we get the guidance, but it's so different from what we are telling ourselves or what we thought that we'll walk away saying that we never got an answer. And what, and what, and, and what the person should say is, I didn't get the answer that I've made up for myself and that I expected to receive. So I'm not paying attention to the answer because it's not what I told myself has to happen in order to have this problem answered. Like, you know, like if you, I was talking to a person and they were getting really upset because they thought they weren't getting the, the level of love and attention and intimacy that they would want with someone. And, and so the, the ego will always say, well, what you do when somebody's not giving you what you want is to withhold until they change and do what you want them to do, right? And the truth is saying, no, what you want to do, what you want to do is want it above all else and be willing to listen to what you need to do to have it, which is, which is basically give what you want to receive. Say, brother, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm, re I'm really, I'm, thank you. Thank you. I love you, but it's totally yeah, murdering the attention, my attention. And I'm causing it. Don't have nothing to do with you. I'm the one. I'm the one. I'm the one. Because it's cool for her too. She wants to play and move around oh, and yeah. stuff. Yeah. And so she's not getting what she wants. I'm not getting what I want. <laughs> and so we're going to love each other. Yes, sir. That's right. Oh, above all, because I want peace above all else. Right? So it's not hard to have a relationship with someone if you're with an, in a relationship with someone that y'all love each other. It's only hard when you're in a relationship where you're not expressing the love for each other. And that's because the person doesn't want the love and the peace above all else. And they still think that there's much more they need to do more than want it above all else. And they're still trusting their good intentions, but they're not really trusting their willingness to have it. Right? Then it says, um, co concentrate only on this. Be not disturbed that shadows surround it. That's why you came. That's a, that's a good thing. Say so if you could come without, if you could come without the shadows or the problems, then you wouldn't need the truth, and you wouldn't need the happy instant. So if you already knew how to do this, you wouldn't need this. So stop beating yourself up for wanting to do this, right? I'm not going to beat myself up because I'm trying to be a more loving person. I'm not going to beat myself up because I'm not as loving as I should be. Because if I already knew how to be completely loving, I wouldn't be studying this and I wouldn't be seeking God's guidance. So I shouldn't beat myself up for being the way that I am 
that's making me have to ask for help in the first place. In other words, love is not going to condemn you because you're not able to love everybody unconditionally right now. Love is not going to condemn you just because you have some grievances towards some people right now. Love is not going to condemn you because you may not be as disciplined as you say you like to be on your spiritual path or you're not as giving or as loving as you like to be. Understand if you already knew how to be that way, you wouldn't need the Course in Miracles or I any wisdom text that you study. If you already knew how to be loving, then you would always, you would be having that in your relationship right now. It's possible that both of you are on a similar level, so neither one of you know how to be completely loving all the time. So now you see the purpose of your relationship is to help each other see each other correctly. So my job is to, every way I can, help you remember that you deserve to be loved and you deserve an answer and you deserve support. And most of all, you deserve safety. So when you're mad, when you're angry, when you're upset, when you're putting yourself down, then I'm here to remind you that you are safe and that you are loving and every good thing about you that you've ever done because you've temporarily forgotten who you are and you need me to remind you how lovable you are. But if, I, but if you're feeling that way and I say, well, you're just a low-down bastard, it didn't happen soon enough. Well, if I'm coming at you from that perspective, then I'm actually... I want conflict above all else. See, now I'm not doing what's going to bring on peace, so I must want conflict above all else. So the Course is going to give us the real answers to what we want in any wisdom text. The challenge is going to be, the challenge is going to be letting go of what we've already made our minds up to think is going to be the answer and that's going to make us happy in that situation. It's, it's, it's me being willing to give up the way that I see it in order to see it another way that would be given to me, given to me, that would work. And so I have to trust my willingness to do that. And then it says it right here. And then it's trying to allow us to feel innocent, right? That's why you came. If you could come without your, your shadows, your, 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 your fears, your insecurities, I'm filling in the blank, you would not need the holy, happy, healing instant. So to come to this healing instant, don't come to the holy instant, don't come to your healing with arrogance. There's an instant that you can be healed. There's an instant that everything you think you're going through that causes you any kind of pain could be healed. Anything that you're going through right now that's causing you any kind of upset, you could be healed. Anything that you think is going on in your life or anybody else's life, the Course in Miracles says that could be healed in an instant. That could be healed in an instant. So what do you do? He says, arrogance is assuming that you must achieve the state that the happiness brings with it. See, the Course is saying, you got to be arrogant to believe that you already have to be innocent and holy and healed already before. It's like cleaning up your house before the housekeeper comes, right? That's what he's saying. We think we got to somehow make ourselves holy and pure and healed uh, before we can come to God, before we can come to our help, before we can come to somehow or another, I got to be good enough to come to my helper. I got to be good enough. I got to make myself good enough to go to God. I have to make myself good enough to go to that which created me. Then it'll help me. The Course in Miracles is so loving. It's, and that's arrogant. That's arrogant. Every time you think you got to already be what you're trying to be in order for you to have peace. That's arrogant. The thing I've got to make Earl okay, then I can come to my creator for some help. I've got to make Earl okay first, then I can ask for help from the universe and I'd be here. That's the way we love. That's not the way God loves. And that's what the Course of Miracles keeps trying to tell us. You know what I'm saying? We are so used to the conditional love that we give each other based on scripts that when we hear about a love that's not based on scripts, that's based on us freeing each other and supporting each other. Generally speaking, most people haven't ever experienced that, so they go unconscious because it's more than they think they can give to themselves. And they're right. You can't give it to yourself. That's what you're being told. You'll never make yourself happy. You'll never come up with a way for you to be happy that's going to be permanent. And according to the Course, the only kind of happiness that's real, a love that's real, is the kind you can always count on and the kind that's going to already always be there. But we don't know how to do that. We don't know. We haven't ever experienced that level of unconditional. I, I said we, most people, have not experienced that level of unconditional. So when someone tells you about a solution that seems like it's beyond your ability, you've got you to pass out. 
you got to pass out because it's like you're being told to do something that you don't know how to do and that you can't do by yourself. That can't be the answer. The, can't, the answer couldn't be something I didn't think of. <laughs> and, and adults have a tendency to only want to buy into answers that they have thought of. That's kind of like what makes you an adult is that you don't listen to sense that might come from anybody else. Right? So, because I've got to be the one that comes up with the answer. So, the, the course was saying that, therefore, a lot of times spirit gives us the answers, but if it wasn't because it wasn't what we thought of, then it says we are reluctant to use it. Because as an adult, I should come up with my own answers. So, the course is saying, um, if you could come without your problem, you wouldn't need the healing. So don't come in arrogance. Well, what's arrogance? Assuming that you got to already have achieved the state that you're asking for help with. So the miracle of this holy instant, the miracle of being healed in an instant, this is how you become healed in the instant. If you're talking about you want it in an instant, then you have to understand that the miracle of a holy instant lies in, I love this, come to it not in arrogance, assuming that you got to already be that way that you're asking for help. Then the course of miracle says, uh, guess what? The miracle of the healing instant lies in your willingness to let the happiness and the healing instant be what it is. Let love be what it is. Let peace be what it is. Not your idea of what it is. Let happiness be what happiness is. Not your idea of what you think happiness is. He says, let, let the healing be. Let the truth be. The fact that I say you're innocent and that you deserve love and that you are not your bodies and that you are spiritual beings expressing yourself through physical bodies, that you are more than this, that something loved you so much that it wouldn't have made you something that would die one day? How could, how could any kind of creator that love us give birth to us to kill us? Mm -hmm. this, book, this book asks those kind of questions. You, you know, you don't go right. Yeah, why haven't you been happy? Because you are not determined and you are still trusting your good intentions and you are still doing more than you need to be doing. And you're not happy that you're wrong whenever you're mad and upset. You know, he said, he said that's why you're not happy. <laughs> you ain't doing a damn thing you're being told. And I just said, oh, Holy Spirit. I'm just somebody that talked to me. I said, wait a minute now. You know what I mean? You're going to tell me that I'm not happy right now because I'm not doing any of the things that I'm being told that would actually make me happy? Yes, that's why you're not happy. I'm telling you, and every truth book tells you, and every divine uh, book tells you, and every wisdom text tells you, you're the one that's creating your experience, and you're the one that's responsible for what's happened to you, and it's through your thinking you can change your life. So all you have to do is change the way you think, and your whole physical reality will automatically change. You wouldn't have to be trying to make the job change, the person change, the money change. You change your mind then everything is going to change, and the change you need to make is an ex a change that says, you know, I'm going to be helped, I'm going to be loved, I'm going to be supported no matter what I do. Everything I do is either love or call for love. That's all Earl is ever calling for any time. Because then when you get upset and you act crazy and you're hurting people and you think you're going off, the universe will see that as you crying for help and crying for love, wanting love, because that's why you're acting crazy. That's why the person acting crazy, because they want love, they want love, they want love. Then if you see it as they want love, you're seeing it correctly. And then love will come. Not only come to them, it will come to you because love loves everybody equally and does not love anybody or anything more than anybody or anything else. So love is going to take care of all of us. Specialists are just going to take care of some of us depending on if you're acting right. Specialist love is, I'll give you the love if you are acting right. And then the course is saying, if you want it above all else, you're going to have a love that will love you no matter what you do. And in your worst moments, that love would see you as calling for love. And so when you were most afraid is when you would get help. When you're most angry and vicious, that's when you would receive help. Because you want love above all else. And you're determined to have it. And so that means, I don't know how to break it to you, it means that you're going to have to be willing to do less. You're doing too much. Mm. I'm going to stop here for my own health and safety. <laughs> 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 my inner guidance says, shut the hell up, boy. You better be quiet right now. They've had about enough of you. Let me get this back. <laughs>
Can I ask you all something? Yeah. Was that making any sense? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. I really, really, oh, yeah. and, and you know I'm cool and I love your daughter. Oh, yeah. Right? Okay, no, you know me and I'm cool, you know. She, I think she was just feeling all the emotions. No, that's what I'm like, saying. Yeah. That would have been oh, hell for her. If I was oh, a yeah. dog, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want somebody to be doing this all the time, <laughs> trying to get me to be still. <laughs> hey, those of you who want to share with me, please do. And, and I appreciate if you want to make a financial expression of appreciation. I appreciate that so much. I'm going to do a, a one a one little quick recap right at the end, so hang in there. Also, if you want to have a clarity session with me, a one-on-one -on -one session with me, then go to my website, and you can self-book an appointment with me right from my website. My website is www.earlpurdy.com. Especially think about doing at least one coaching session with me. Uh, and take advantage of the 43 years that I've been obsessed and I've been teaching this to, to really help you make your journey through the course much more powerful and much more easy. Okay, so I'm really making an appeal out there to Course in Miracle students who uh, feel like they would benefit from doing that through me and with me. And, and I'd love it if you drop me an email and let me know if you consider yourself my student and the Holy Spirit student through me. I want to hook up with the people who find me irresistible. <laughs> I want to connect with the people that appreciate me the most and I appreciate them the most. And what Spirit has taught me in all these years is the best, the best and the easiest way to have something is to simply ask for it. It took me so long to hear the Spirit, asking, you shall receive. Asking, you shall receive. Asking, you shall receive. Ask. I'm not telling you to make up what you think you want to have on your own and then come to me after you've made your plan. Then the Spirit says to me, like, guess what? The only reason why you're making plans is you don't think I'll take care of you. If your plans are a reflection of your lack of faith because you think you're not going to be taken care of unless you come up with your plan to do it. Right? So, and I, and I had to listen. To, I say that again because the voice talks to me after all these years. It's, yeah, and it, was, and it was exactly what the court said. You're only making a plan because you don't think you're going to be taken care of. If you really knew that you could trust this present moment to completely and stay in this present moment, then every one of your moments would be safe. But you all get out of the present moment, and then you go into the past and future. When you go into the past and future, it's where all the, the, cha the challenging, painful things come. They come from you being afraid of what's going to happen in the future based on what you went through in the past. So you, you, you use right now to project all the bad stuff into the future, and you think it's you learning by experience. All you're doing is repeating the same patterns you always have. Well then, or how do you know when you, you are uh, still not making up your own plan? Well, then you would be doing exactly what I told you today, which is you would be desiring to be determined, have desire, having willingness, wanted above all else. Being willing to remember that, not trusting your good intentions, trusting your will. In other words, you would be spending the rest of the day trying to remember what you just heard and then apply it. And then I go, well, why don't I do this? Well, it's because it's not the answer you made up, so you're not hearing what you think should be the answer. And it's hard to keep your attention when you're hearing something that you don't think is valuable to you. That's why. If I really thought it was valuable, I'd be honed in like a mother. That's why you have to want it above all else. That's why you don't want to get involved with anybody or anything you don't want to connect with without all else. Because if you are not focused on them in that situation 100%, then they're not going to be able to keep your attention and you're not going to be able to be present with them when they're communicating with you. Because you're not interested in being there because you don't see the advantage to both of you of the joining. You know, if I knew that every one of you had a gift for me that, that if I was to focus in on and be present with you, I could receive that gift, you would not have a problem with my attention if I thought giving you my attention was going to get me what I wanted. So if you go after only what you want above all else, it's going to have your attention, it's going to have your determination, it's going to have your willingness, and you are God, you are creator, you create through your intention and your thought, BAM! 
you'll see it manifest or not manifest, and you'll be happy about either one of them because you'll know it was the best thing that could have happened to you was that you didn't get him, you didn't get her, you didn't get the job. That was the best thing on earth that could have ever happened to you, and if you had it, that would have been the best thing. So when you become awake, you're much more interested in keeping your peace than you are in the thing you think you want. And that's how you can tell how awake you are. It's how much you're going to give your peace away if you don't get it. And he just told us, well, you're not going to get it if you don't want it above all else. And you stop trusting your good intentions and go, I'm willing to have love. I'm willing to have peace. I'm willing to have friendships. I'm willing to have, you know, focus on your willingness, not your intentions or anybody else's intentions. I don't sit around wondering if somebody's trying to hurt me or manipulate me applied up against me because I know if I'm radiating the vibration of love, they can't hurt me. Mm -hmm. I don't have to know, I don't have to suspect everybody around me. The more loving I am, the more, the safer I feel, mm -hmm. and the safer you feel, the safer you are. Mm -hmm. Woohoo! So the next time you get ready to attack somebody for any reason, remember you're just attacking yourself. And, you, and, and it's so cool if you say, I'm getting angry. I'm about to go off. This is an attack upon myself. The court says, say that to yourself. And when it first told me to say that to myself, I went, that sounds kind of negative. Every time that somebody <coughs> is doing something, or I'm thinking a negative or fearful thought or an angry thought that I should tell myself, uh, this thought is an attack upon myself. He said, well, you've already been taught all your life not to attack yourself, not to hurt yourself. You've already been told all your life that, that, that's, that that's not something you want to do is hurt yourself and attack yourself. You already have lifelong training with not wanting to hurt yourself if you think it's a, you attack yourself. So if you say you're attacking yourself when you're saying crazy, unloving things, your mind is going to automatically stop those thoughts from coming to your mind because your mind's been trained for you not to do things that hurt yourself. So tell yourself when you're judging, when you're blaming, when you're attacking, when you're seeing yourself as guilty or unloved or insecure, say, this is an attack upon myself. This is an attack upon... Then your mind has already been programmed to turn around and go, wait a minute, I'm not... Uh-uh, you're not supposed to attack yourself. Bam! I'm getting rid of those thoughts automatically. But I don't know that works until I do it. So I got to trust my willingness, not my good intention. My good intention is to study the book. Right? My intention is to focus on it and forgive. So I need to get that because that, I haven't even trust that because it's not enough. My trust of you all is not enough. My trust of you all is not enough for me to use good intentions as a, as a way to judge what to do with you. My trust in you and your trust in me is not enough. So we can we can have the best of intentions, best of intentions and still look like we've hurt each other. We all have had that experience. So don't trust your intention. Trust your willingness. And it's like, wow, that's deep. So that's what I mean when, when I say get with me for a coaching session and I can help you look at this in another way that will make it so practical. And not only that, you will be doing what it says and not what I say. Because no good teacher won't, has any other purpose other than you getting to the point that you don't need them. You might come around as part of the maintenance program, but you don't need me. Right? I don't want to make somebody more dependent on me. Mm. Mm. That's right. All right. I tell you, I tell you, I love it when I go off. All right. <laughs> 1 o'clock p.m. here at Unity at 1555 Ray Street, 1 o'clock p.m. Mountain Time. Please come. You can come in person so we can join with each other because I, I love joining with everybody. So come here at 1555 Ray's, 1 p.m. Mountain Time, and I'm available also for astrological, numerological <coughs> interpretations and readings. That's nothing but... <sighs> What would be the easiest way for me to move through here? What, is, what are the lessons that I was going to learn in, in terms of form? Uh, what's another way I can get rid of all the fear and the lack and the, in, that I have or the insecurities that I have? It's just another way for spirit to communicate with you. That's what it is. So when you say you want to have a chart done, you're saying, I want to hear the easiest way for me to move through life. Doing the things that I'm best at that come natural for me to do. That's all it's telling you. And, it's so, and, and the once you get that realization, everything and within 90 days, especially if you really get that, then everything starts to shift in your life to bring everything in line with the way you sh really would be happy and what you should be doing. Because now you got the idea of what that is. And you won't resist it because it really was made for you. 
And that's, it, it, everything could be so much easier if we would do less and allow ourselves to receive the instruction and then do, and do that a little. Wow. Wow. So you can watch all my stuff on Facebook and on YouTube, Earl Purdy. Um, I'm just here to be truly helpful. That's the only reason why I'm in this room. So guess what? Would you take a deep breath? And what we're going to say is, don't trust your good intentions, trust your willingness. Don't trust your good intentions, trust your willingness. Trust your willingness. Trust your willingness. How willing are you to have it? How willing are you to have this? How willing are you to have this? And you know what I'm talking about. And you know what I'm talking about. How willing are you to have this? How willing are you to have this? Do you want this above everything else? Do you want this above everything else? Do you want them above everything else? Do you want them above anything else? Do you want them? Do you want that? Do you want that? Above all else. Do you want it above all else? You prepare for it. You prepare, you prepare for it by wanting it above all else. Don't trust your good intentions. Trust your willingness. 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 You don't have to, you don't have to make yourself perfect before you can be helped. You don't have to make yourself a kind of nicer person before you could be helped. You don't have to make yourself a kind of nicer, more unselfish person in order for you to be helped. You can be selfish and be helped. You can be insecure and be helped. You can be manipulative and be helped. You can feel like you're weak. You can be sick, but you still can be helped. There's nothing you can do. There's not one single thing you do, can do to change eternal love, what's real love. So stop sweating it. Stop sweating it. Even if you have the worst day you ever had in your life and you cursed everybody out that you saw all day, you're still going to be loved. You're still going to be loved. Be willing to be loved. Be willing to be loved no matter what mistakes you make. Be willing to be loved no matter what you do. Be, have a trust your willingness, not your good intentions. We'll stop there. Oh, and I also love to have you on my contact list. If there's some stuff about to come through me, I don't know what to do. I want to love you all more. I want to get the blocks out of the way. I want to be with people like you. I want to be with people who want to love more, connect more, get rid of their fear more, who want to be in a world where we are safe with each other, around people that we can trust, that we know want our best. I want to join with people who want that above all else. This is my plea. This is my plea. I want to join with others who want to love like me, who wants everybody to be loved, everybody to be connected, everybody to be safe. I want that. And I have to, and this book keeps saying, you got to, spirit keeps saying, you have to ask for it. I'm entitled to miracles, and you are entitled to miracles. You are. But I, do need, I need to remember it. I need you to remind me. I need you to remind me. I need, I need, we need to say, I need. and if you don't, then I've got to be okay with that. <laughs> That's right. You see what I'm saying? If, you don't, if none of y'all ever do anything I want, I've got to still feel okay about that. I want to feel good about that. Because more people don't do what I want them to do than do what I want them to do. So I, <laughs> so I can learn how to be happy about people not doing what I want me to do. I'd be happy all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be the happiest guy around. And the classes are going to become more outrageous. So uh, I just want to give you a warning that you need do so little. I want to have some fun. As well, and that's already fun to me. You know what I mean? I want, I want to have some fun. I want to have some fun with y'all. Put your clothes on. <laughs> now, <laughs> I love you. And may the course be with you. Just go to my website, Earl Purdy, EarlPurdy.com. Yeah. Would y'all acknowledge y'all please? Yeah. You're so cool. Yeah.